Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. And I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we have got a wonderful woman on today who has had a loss and has done fantastic things with it, and uh, we want to introduce her. Okay, I'll introduce her. Uh, her name is Shirstein Davies, and she is the president and co-founder of Charlie's Guys, which is a national nonprofit that provides bereaved siblings 18 and younger with the gift or experience to help them on their grief journey. And Charlie's guys is named after her son, Charlie, who died at the age of two. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the show, Shirstein. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me here. Shirstein, now, um, Charlie, your little Charlie guy, he was 23 months old and he died in 2017. That's not a long time ago. Yeah, it still feels very recent. Yeah. Now he had a brother. Yes. And An older brother. And his brother was three? Yeah, three and a half. And how did you come up with his name, Charlie's Guys? Well, um, Charlie, obviously his name, but he used to always call the superheroes that he loved the guys. So uh, they were the Transformers in disguise. And he would always dress up with his older brother and point to helicopters in the sky, airplanes, and he'd say, the guys, the guys. He thought his superheroes were everywhere. And so the guys was short for disguise because he couldn't really pronounce it. And so we just took that and used it. Uh, so sweet. Now you got, uh, you were pregnant with a daughter at the time that he passed away, right? Yes. Wow. Well, you went through a lot in the last two and a half years, girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you said that Charlie died of a virus? He did. And it's not specific what kind of virus they didn't name it if it was the flu or rsv there was no real um, specifics other than a virus and it was um, in his respiratory system and it was just really hard information for us to hear because he wasn't coughing his breathing wasn't labored there were really no signs of this he just didn't wake up one morning and mm -hmm. it was a morning that i had actually spent a lot of time in his room because um he woke up in the middle of the night and wet the bed, so I had to clean that up. And then his brother woke up twice in the middle of the night because he needed assistance. So there was just a lot of commotion that night. And I felt like I had my eyes watching them pretty well. You must have had a lot of support around that. I think that's what you said, that you have had so much support is why you wanted to start an organization, right? Exactly, yeah, we were very inspired by our community mm -hmm. to start our organization. Well, uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, something current right now, how this coronavirus is impacting your family, because we know it's impacting a lot of our audience family. It's definitely a big trigger. Um, we are pretty terrified and taking it very seriously. So mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of talk that the media is hyping it up and um, they could be. There also could be a lot of information we don't know. Um, and it's just a scary time because he did die from a virus and our kids have had viruses on and off for the past two and a half years. And that's been frightening. We've had to go to the doctor immediately. We go to the doctor basically once a week, anytime they have any type of illness, just to check their lungs, um, make sure that it's not progressing. And with this new threat, we are sort of... I wouldn't say quarantine yet because it's a, that's a strong word, but we aren't going into big public places. We typically go to church on Sundays. We're not going to church. Um, we pull our son out of school pretty frequently and we're not traveling at all, which is probably one of the hardest things for us to do because we travel a lot because when you are grieving, you have to keep very busy mm -hmm. in order to sort of distract yourself and just keep moving forward and all these things that we've looked forward to we've now had to cancel my husband's a professor 
And so he goes to a lot of conferences and we just go with him. Mm -hmm. Then we get the benefit of going to a really cool place and he gets the benefit of being with his family on a work trip. So. Sure, Steen, it sounds in the best of situations you would be concerned, but this is a whole nother level of fear because yes. you had a child die. Right. And I think that three parents are more hypervigilant about these things. And mm -hmm. on top of that, Charlie died of a virus. Right. So right. you're, and, and it sounds like even without the coronavirus, you were taking your kids to the doctor more. You were right. more concerned about their health and welfare. Right. And now, you have, not going anywhere. and now you have the coronavirus and the news and the media and things really being shut down. Mm -hmm. And everybody out there on some, to some extent has a level of fear, but I think bereaved parents and especially bereaved parents that have had a child die of something like a virus mm -hmm. are pretty much where you are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the, the interesting part is too, is I think that we alleviate some of our anxiety by getting together mm -hmm. and by supporting each other in person. And, and you can't even go to church anymore or you choose not to right now. Exactly. And we host our small group that we normally have at our house. Um, we've mm -hmm. pretty much put everything on pause. Let's start with the way you have coped because you're obviously okay. family, you're, you know, before the virus, how, how were you coping? Yeah, we, we really focus on just being together and um, whether it's going to dinner or going on a walk. Mm -hmm. um, we just try and spend as much quality time together as possible because we know how valuable it is and that it's not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And um, we, I mean, we do a lot with Charlie still, like we had a picnic on our driveway and my husband mm -hmm. brought out a chair for Charlie. And so we still include him in everything we can include him on. We'll take his photo with us on trips, but it's hard. I mean, it's, it's just so hard. It, you know, grief goes in waves. So right. sometimes we're doing really well and sometimes we're just not. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing to take care of yourself during uh, the situation in the, in the country and in the world that's where people are kind of stra very stressed out right now? I try and get facials. I mean, I try oh, I love it. to get better yeah. for myself. Um, <laughs> It's hard because I just had a baby, so I really don't want to work yeah. out yet, but usually yeah. I play tennis and that releases a lot of endorphins and kind of keeps me um, on my feet and active. How do you tell your children, for parents out there that have lost a child and their kids are anxious right mm -hmm. now about the virus, what do, you, what do you tell your children to put their mind at ease? Well, um, our children haven't been too anxious yet. I, I don't think, I don't know if we're not, if we're censoring information for them or if they're just more relaxed, but um, we just tell them to wash their hands and we try not to make too big of a deal about it because we don't want to stress them out um, because it's ultimately, I mean, it's ultimately out of our control. Your comment is one that I hear from bereaved people. Oh. When, they, when they're healing and when they're moving towards strength, it is, it's out of our control. I think that that's one thing that we learn as bereaved parents, mm -hmm. that things are out of our control and we do have to give up and, and trust that we will know what to do if something happens, but we have to, we can't anticipate the worst. I mean, the worst has happened in a lot of ways. I mean, you know, Definitely. so, so there is a loss of fear and, and there is some strength, you know, some what we want to call post-traumatic growth mm -hmm. in what happens to us, uh, you know, after this kind of a loss. So I, I have a feeling that you and your husband are presenting some strength to those kids if they're not stressed, because we know one thing that kids mm -hmm. look at their parents. Yeah that's how kids feel the most stress is if they see their parents acting like they have some kind of control, as you say, you know, you just have to trust. Well, I, I love that you are not, that you're creating a calm environment for your kids. I think it is so important because kids are very concrete in their thinking and they can go to worst case scenario very quickly. Um, so I love the environment you're putting out there to say that your kids aren't that stressed, like my mom said, speaks volumes to the way you and your husband are handling this. I'm a believer, I believe in Jesus, I believe in heaven. I believe that Jesus is the way you get to heaven by believing in him. 
And um, I do feel a huge sense of peace knowing that I will see Charlie again. Um, I have so many questions because I don't know what he'll look like. I don't know how old he'll be. I mean, I wish that we had more information about that, but I'll just be patient. It's a huge test of patience for sure. Um, but yeah, I believe in the power of prayer and um, I know that there's people praying for me and I personally don't pray as much as I used to. It's just, it's, it's hard for me and I don't know why at this point, but I, I can feel, I can feel, you know, um, I can feel peace. So I know that I'm getting that from a supernatural source. I love that. Well, thank you. Now tell us about your program. After Charlie left, I mean, I just, every time I look at my son still, I'm, um, it's, it's a trigger because his brother's not with him and his brother was so close in age and they would play together. And I just, I, I saw this huge loss. Like, of course I'm experiencing a loss, but um, his loss might be even greater because it would, it will last him longer because he's so young that he has to live his entire life. I'm probably only going to live maybe another 40 years at most. So his life is naturally going to be longer without his brother. And so by being um, inspired by our community, uh, they were providing us with things that I wouldn't have even thought of. It's so hard to think in your grief. You really do get grief brain that we wanted to provide something for other siblings to, for them to look forward to, because it really does help you looking forward to something. And so that's what we do is we provide them with a gift. It could be a physical gift like an iPad, or it could be an experience like Disneyland tickets. And we have a budget per child and an, a budget per parent if it's you know um, appropriate for a parent to accompany a child to something like a concert or other event. And with that budget, we're able to do a lot for these families. That's fun. So how do people find you? They find us online or by word of mouth. So we have a social media presence on Instagram and Facebook, and we have a website. Mm -hmm. And the website is charliesguys.org. Yes. And the referral form is on the main page. So when you go to the website, it's that first page. And... There is also a referral form through Facebook because it'll link you directly to our page. And people, I mean, we had 20 referrals over the weekend. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, people are just talking about us more. That's fabulous. And it's great during this time to hear uplifting stories and things that you're doing and using the internet because it's a great time to connect through the internet. And I would suggest that everybody who is listening to this uh, should think about connecting with family members they haven't been in touch with. You can reach out in cyberspace. Give the world some cyber hugs, just like you are. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Shirstine. And thank you so much for remembering the siblings out there. And I know that Charlie continues to be your guiding light. Thank you. We want to thank everybody for tuning in today. And we want to always remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.